Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Huffman Racing Radio. I'm Landon Huffman, and sitting with me at the table today is Seth Brotherton and R.J. Williams. Per normal, how we doing, guys? Great. We're on our 28th episode. 28th episode. Is that That's incredible. I mean, that's at least 30 hours wasted. Still the longest. That's a record for any podcast yes, effort that I think we've say. ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Still the longest running podcast you've been a part of. <laughs> yes, that's, that is very true. <laughs> We had some big news this past week. What happened? You really don't know? <laughs> <laughs> Landon gave up drinking beer and failed yeah, the that, first day. Yeah, I can imagine that. That was a big topic on the last podcast. I'm here to tell you guys that I did not achieve my goal. As you can see, I have a nice uh, Talladega Light from Michael Walter Bruin here in my glass. He, he ain't even trying again. He, he, ain't, he, he ain't even trying again. No, well, here's, okay, here's really what happened. If you missed last well, week's episode. Well, that was the big news. We'll catch y'all next episode. <laughs> if you missed last week's not next week. episode, I come out and told everybody that I was uh, going to give up beer for a month. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, you know. That's news right there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I told everybody that I wasn't going to drink beer for a month, contrary to what RJ thinks I've told everybody. Which we knew was a lie when he said it. No, I... I sensed it. I wanted to do it. I really did. And then I went to Pockets and Brews. That's a failure every time. What What is the saying around here? Want, you can want in one hand and shit in another and see which one fills up faster? <laughs> What? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. And if you would have went to boxcar instead of pockets, your shit hand would have definitely filled up. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of my reasonings for my failure. Excuses. Well, next week I'm going on a fishing trip, and I didn't think uh, about yeah, that. Yeah, you're screwed. Oh, God, yeah. So, and it's a, it's a basically a week long just drinking trip. Is all it is. So there was literally no way that I was going to be able to. It was a bad goal set by me yes. from the beginning. But I do want to attempt this at some point in time. It just it's not going to be right now. So for those Poor of you out there through. that really were invested in my uh, commitment, I'm sorry. It just didn't work out. All right, again next time. But the main announcement that I'd like to talk about is our 2024 plans. Uh, we recently announced that I will be driving for Jimmy Mooring Racing full-time on the Cars Tour in 2024. Very excited uh, to commit to the full season, which will actually be my very first full season in the Cars Tour. This year, I missed a few races and kind of joined late, which I am ninth in points now. I was about to say, I was going to ask that. Where are you at in points? Ninth or tenth, somewhere around there. I think that's ninth. But uh, excited to race with Jimmy Mooring next year, and the best part about it is we get to race out of Huffman Racing Shop. Yay. Yeah, so I get to drag these two with me every week. Thrilling. (laughs) Does he know what he's attaching his name to? <laughs> um, has he has he listened to the podcast? Probably not. Oh. I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. Uh, Seth has deemed it officially the Huffman Racing Hell Tour 2024. And it even rhymes now, so yeah. you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2023 Hell Tour was only two two races one weekend. Now we get 17 weekends. Yeah. Uh, what, what? Where's this extra weekend coming in at? I, I thought it was 16 weeks. Sad. I know. This Where's bullshit. this extra one coming at? Well... I can't really announce it, that. Yet. Okay, oh. he knows things other people don't. No. Yeah, so long season, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. My dad's going to crew chief, and we're basically able to operate and race just like we would a Huffman race and entry. Uh, we have a brand new RNS race car, which is very, very cool that we will be bringing into the shop here very soon. And we also have a brand new David West Enforcer engine coming our way. <sighs> So, first time in our entire... We never had nothing brand new ever. Nothing. Not not nothing. First time in the history of Huffman Racing that Maybe like a hose or something was brand new. Possess a brand new car. Well, all that shit come from Harbor Freight, so... Or Dave's truck parts. Very true, yeah. (laughs) I mean, we might have had new brake calipers to start this year, but they were stock GM calipers. (laughs) And not Fresh out of the box, though. Brand new brake pads, too, straight from Advance. Yeah, Advance. Yeah. Yeah. Advance for those that say it that way. Although, shout out to uh, PFC Brakes because we do have a deal with PFC now, so uh, we no longer use Advance pads. Thanks to our friends at PFC. Thank God, because those things make a mess. They do, and uh, they cook. Yes, yeah, brake just fluid. don't stop real good. No. Uh, Seth, you got drunk at a wedding this weekend, didn't you? Uh, I wouldn't say I got drunk. I did drink. Response. How many beers did you drink? Don't lie. <sighs> I don't know if I can say that number because I did drive home Saturday night. Oh, yes. Please don't air that. Yo, you have to say it now. He had. He was, it was the ah. course of a long day. So I don't mean, hold probably the man two. 
two plus Times one. ten. You had 20 beers? I don't know. I really have no Did you drink Bush that. Light? No. Nah, well, them boys, they's pumping out them Coors Lights. Mm. So, I mean, and then, let's see. I, I did start my day with a Bush Light. I stopped at a gasser, got me a Bush Light. Was it Cupboard Express? Uh, it was a Fast Fills. Oh. Valero, maybe? I really don't know. Exxon? Hell, who knows? I don't know. I couldn't. I probably couldn't get you back to where I went with without a GPS. I mean, it was it was up there. Oh yeah, you weren't in. Uh, so uh, you weren't in the old Claremont way? area. Where I you? don't think I was in the cupboard range of stores. Probably not. Started with a bush light, and and as soon as we there was so this place was really cool. <clears throat> I think it's new. So the venue set over on the hill, huge ass pond down below. So we fished that pond Saturday morning. We didn't catch many. I think a couple of them caught some. But on the hill is a double wide, right? Super super nice double wide. A trailer. Well, mm, yeah, they make nice yes, double wides but, now. Like, it had been renovated, so the inside was badass. Outside still looked just old, like dated. Inside was badass. That's said nobody well, would break into it. So, <laughs> they rent that. Like, I guess, I don't know if you have to pay extra or what, but it comes with the venue. But you can rent it as an Airbnb, from what I understand. Oh, like, so, if so you, you wanna, get married there and if you customate want, your marriage at the same place? If you, yeah. <laughs> so, if you want, uh, like, a weekend getaway, you can Airbnb it, right? Well... Apparently, the guys were supposed to spend the night there Friday night, but the girls kicked us out, and they decided to stay there, which mm. was probably a blessing in disguise because we would have died. And there was a bike a bike ramp in the backyard that went into the pond. Oh. oh. So, there would have definitely been shenanigans. This place certainly doesn't so, have insurance. As soon as we get there, like... <laughs> or you have we, to sign a waiver. <laughs> we go down, we fish a little bit, we go back up, and, you know, what are you going to do on wedding day? You're hanging out at the house. It's not time for you to get ready because you're there four hours earlier than you need to be. Always. I believe. I don't know which one it was, but they're like, hey, let's shotgun one. So we shotgun one. That's so bro-like. Uh, well. <laughs> RJ, can you shotgun a beer? Hell no, and, I can't. Sh- and then, you think I'm going to Have you ever beer? done a power hour? What's a power hour? No, what's that? Enlighten us, please. Okay, this is probably one of the most fun drinking things you can do. You go on YouTube and you search Power Hour. So they have like 80s classic rock Power Hour, 90s country Power Hour, okay. a lot of okay. Reba, Schneider, oh, Wayne, okay, all that stuff. Marking like, up my tree. Yeah. <laughs> so what it is, is like it'll play a clip of a song and you're supposed to like karaoke with it and then you drink. So huh. between every song you drink. And I think it's supposed to be like six beers per hour is what you drink. Okay. I don't know. But we did a couple power hours, so that was. Were you shotgunning time. in the power no, hour, no, or no, no, just no. sipping? You just like sip or whatever. Gotcha. And I think there might be a point where you're supposed to crack a new beer and you're supposed to finish it. I suggested that next time we do one in a more controlled environment, without the public, we should try to finish a beer per song oh my for God. an hour. But a song, regardless, let's say we a song average three hour, minutes. That's twenty beers. Out, Got over to the open bar. They had Ultra on draft and Coors. Ooh, I drank nice. a few. The draft the draft beer is just and, so much better. Uh, I, I did quit at about 7 o'clock. I quit because I knew I'd be driving home a few hours later. So, But, I mean, I drank a pretty good amount. Sounds like a good time. Um, I'm just hung up on the fact that RJ can't I didn't drink enough beer. to dance. So, well, I've... So, Seth... That tells you I didn't go hard. I just went So, long. Seth wasn't really that intoxicated. I've seen... That's what she said. So, Seth has... Um, Seth has this signature move at most weddings. When he gets se- severely intoxicated, I've seen it basically at every wedding that I've been to <laughs> that Seth has been at or been in with Seth. Um, he usually ends up with two beers in his hand, uh, most likely bush light, usually bush light, and he's double fisting, and he kind of gets this bop going on, <laughs> and it just bops through the whole, uh, the whole, the crowd. whole crowd, just, just bopping. Around the same bop the And whole if time. your mom or your sibling or, or your anybody out there of remote, like, close distance to Seth, he's most likely going to grind up on them <laughs> and then continue on with his yeah. day. Um, just bopping through. Yeah. I actually seen it at the Christmas party, too. He was double fisting at the Christmas party. So that's when you know Seth's having a good time. If he's got the double fist going on and he's got the old Claremont bop. (laughs) The Claremont bop. Um, Trademarked. Trademark, yeah. Nobody uses that. If you steal that, the old Claremont crawl. That's what we're calling it. (laughs) Claremont crawl. Um, RJ, you can't shotgun a beer? No. I'm not very good at it. I've gotten better than I used to be, but I'm still not. RJ, will you shotgun a beer when we... We're going to have to have a video of you shotgunning a beer now. Well, okay. Well, first of all, I think I have one time. 
well. I feel like I got it all over myself. <laughs> I feel like I got it all over myself. I well, could have sworn it was with you idiots. It's very possible. I, I'm pretty sure it was. It didn't go well. Well, we're going to shotgun a beer. Can we shotgun a wine cooler instead? No, no. those are glass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure they, I'm sure they put them in a can. I don't think so. We're going to shotgun. Okay. No. I'll let you shotgun a Coca Cola. Okay. No. no. I think that'd be harder that would than hurt. a beer. That would, that yeah. would hurt. harder than a beer. We're going to shotgun a beer. Uh, RJ, that's going to be a video we'll put out soon. I don't know. We got to we gotta definitely have RJ getting into the beer. But RJ, you actually went to the race this weekend, yeah? No, I watched it at home. You went to the race, you lying As ass. As you burnt a pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a dumbass. I fell asleep, yeah. and I had a dream that I burnt the pizza, and I woke up, and I realized I burnt the pizza. So Maybe I went, it wasn't a dream. It, well, it was, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I went back to Walmart and got me two more to make sure I didn't screw the second one up, oh so God. I had a backup, and I didn't. It came out pretty nice. Made sure I didn't fall asleep, though. Well, he did go to Tri-County this weekend and watch the race, so we're going to talk about my result at Tri-County and um, what all went down at the Cars Tour event this past weekend in Hudson. Yeah, because I got something to say. Yeah, we have an RJ smoke break on tap for you this episode, and we've got a few more topics to discuss. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Huffin' Racing Radio. We're going to go ahead and hop right into this thing. Cars Tour, Tri-County, for the second go-around, uh, was this past weekend. Obviously, the first time we were there, we won the 30000 to win Old North State Nationals, and this go-around, uh, there was still a solid field. I think they had 30 cars on the entry list. I believe 29, only 29 started, I think. But, Which one wasn't there? Uh, I think Satterfield loaded up and went home, oh. but he was there. All of them were there. Figured it'd be a watcher face. Can. No, she wasn't on the entry list. Oh. Uh, so 30, 30 late-mile stock cars, really, really solid field. Um, Beautiful facility, especially with those new Musco lighting Yeah, they do have the new lighting, uh, which we ran a race there under the new lighting mm-hmm, already and won. But, did uh, you win this race? No, I did not. Oh. I qualified 12th, so started back a number of spots farther than we started in the 30K. And we drove up to the front, had a really solid race car, uh, just a little bit on the tighter side versus uh, the 30,000 to win race, um, which still we were able to make hay on the bottom, but a lot more people were trying to run the bottom versus the 30K. Do you think you were tighter because of the weather? Uh, I think the track had more grip, yeah. Okay. I think the track in general had more grip, but it was actually slower, which is weird. Uh, more grip but slower so it kind of locked everybody down but uh, ended up finishing third so a good podium finish uh the only other top five i've had this year outside of our win uh, i had two sixth place finishes but the only other top five we've had for uh, nelson in the 22 car so i was happy with it um really a relatively uneventful race for me as far as uh contact or anything like that i didn't even hardly have a scratch on the car uh, but I passed a lot of cars. That's I really thought you were going to have one a few times. Yeah, I know. There was a couple a couple moments that got a little hairy, but the last restart played in my favor. They, I don't know how they didn't wreck. The caution should have came out probably. Uh, Cade Brown was no, dead sideways. Out. He was dead sideways. No, they, they, you don't throw pushed. a caution because the car's sideways. He was getting pushed through the corner. No. I mean, I'm happy that they didn't, but in my peripheral, I seen them crashing, and I thought for sure the caution was going to come out. Mm-hmm. But we restarted fifth, the final restart, and jumped to third and raced with Diaz there for second for a little while, and then... Uh, finished a couple car lengths behind him, but Brendan Butterbean Queen was by far the class of the field. He was on rails. Man, I don't know what Lee Pulliam and them got figured out right now, but that thing was digging. And they're going to get rid of that car at the end of the year. What? Yeah, they're selling it. Well, they ain't going to have all the points and stuff on yeah, it. Probably now, not. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Lee, if Lee's... Yeah, if Lee's done anything special to that thing, it will no longer be special when they sell it. I can promise you that. But uh, congrats to those guys. Butterbean was really good in the 30K as well, and then they ran out of fuel. Um, I was, I felt like as good as him in the 30K, um, but this race he definitely had us covered, had the whole field covered. Let every lap, qualified on the pole, and uh, swept it. Swept it, yeah. Shit, so. you think he needs any extra help next year? No. They don't like. Let us know. I'm sure their help is a little more dedicated. Mm. Yeah. They're not allowed Are to you go hunting. I'm not dedicated? They're not allowed to go hunting when the team is racing. Oh, I, don't I don't believe that for a second. You don't well, think well, that their team is allowed to go hunting? Well, they're probably getting paid too. So, well, probably. <laughs> hey, I also don't think different levels I, of also, commitment. <laughs> also, I don't think joining a race team. I don't think you sell your soul. I, I mean, I don't think you become a prisoner. Well, no, they actually prisoner. work on the cars though. <laughs> A prisoner. I was very committed to you up until about August. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough, it's been a rough we uh, month for Seth in the old uh, 
race shop working department. Mm. But like we all know, it's because it's hunting season, and he's got to get out there and put some corn feed out and shoot the bucks. Get his fifteen As pointer. RJ likes to say, yeah, uh, he'll get him a fifteen pointer. He's but close this year. Another good crowd at uh, Tri County this weekend mm-hmm. as well. So I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, Going back there next year twice on the tour. Hopefully it gets two dates. Hopefully the 30K is there again. We don't know that yet for sure, but I have a feeling as good as the show was this year, I have a hard time getting it away from that place. Well, both races were damn good. Yeah. that I mean, the second race was good too, mm-hmm. other than Butterbean stinking it up. Well, other than that, you eliminate that one vehicle. Right. The rest right. of them, that rest was a good race. Yeah, everybody watch. else was pretty close together. Yeah. I agree. I guess we can go ahead and jump right into the next segment here, which is another edition of RJ Smoke Break. And me and Seth are going to contribute a little bit to this. Seth, probably not so much because he has not watched the race, nor has he was he at the race, nor does he give a shit, I don't think. Uh, Butterbean's, queen, uh, Butterbean's team would watch the race. They probably would, Seth. I'm sure they watched the race. My best friend, since I was three years old, got married, and you wanted me to watch your race? Yes. No. Absolutely. <laughs> no commitment brother yeah you know Seth's just not bought in it's just what it is <laughs> <laughs> anyways another edition of rj smoke break coming at you we're going to discuss uh the i guess prelude to the late mile stock race that went down at tri-county this weekend with the cars tour pro late models and all the bullshit that happened and that that race entailed so without further ado it is rj's smoke break most of the race was pretty uneventful um, Quapple had to went back to the started in the back, I believe. Yeah, he had to. The, something happened. Something happened in yeah. post qualifying tech. So they put him in the back. Had to drive back through the field, which he did, no problems. Making passes on the bottom without running people over, you know, proper racing. It looked like. Uh, there probably about what fifteen laps to go is when when all hell broke loose. You say? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Maybe like twenty, something so, like that. Okay, so twenty laps to go. Somewhere around there. I guess Hettinger had made it to the front. She was leading. She, she was had leading. been leading. Yeah. Um, racing deal down the back straight away. You know, he, he's, he's trying to keep her pinched down a little bit. Got a little loose. Yeah, that's the video I saw. Up into her. Down. Yeah, up into her. Uh, instead of hitting kind of... They hit even with the tires. So, naturally, that's going to upset both cars because there's no give at that point of the race car. So, here Hettinger spins down the back straight away. Back to the end to the wall. Two, three more pile in. Um, they send Caden back to the back because of that. Correct? Yeah, they put him in the That's rear. what I thought. Um, again, he drove back to the front. But well, before me, that. Bef- what? What? What before that? He got right hooked before oh, that. Oh, yes, yes. Before that. <laughs> so they put him to the back. We can talk about how much of a dumbass this race was, but <laughs> yeah. forget the most important part. Yeah, this well, should that, be our. This should be Seth's smoke break. That ain't the Seth's most Seth's dip break. That ain't the most important part, and that ain't where my issues lie in this smoke <laughs> break. Okay, so uh, send them to the back. Katie comes down, gets herself rolling again. Four new, four however many new tires on it. <laughs> Used tires. God. Back out there. And then as they take the green, she proceeds to right hook him, wreck, spin, just spin him out, but destroy her own stuff hitting the inside wall. Hmm. Now, a little little uh, note here. If you're going to wreck somebody, you're not supposed to wreck yourself at the same time or destroy your stuff at the same time. So for you racers out there listening, that's very important. Keep that in mind when you, when you go about making your decisions. Um, I don't think that was her decision that she made on her own. Um, I'm I'm feel fairly certain she probably had a little uh, encouragement to do such a thing. Um, no matter what, you know, some people might say that they don't race like that. I find that hard to believe when you do something like that on the front stretch on the initial on the restart. Um, but they park her. He Caden gathers his stuff back up, gets going again. So my issue lies with coming to the checker flag. The way the race ended. Correct. Um, Higgins was leading. Ashton Higgins was leading in the nine car. Um, looked like he kept himself clean the whole the whole race. Kept you know kept himself in a good position. Small hometown team, yes. by the way. Yes. This kid works on his own car. Mm-hmm. He's blue collar. His family actually uh, runs, runs Tri County, mm-hmm. but uh, they work out of a one bay garage. You know he's racing against these big teams. Basically, the the big teams of the Pro Late Model Series. A lot like your pals here at Huffman Racing. Correct. So, it was Gavin 
what's his last name again? Bochelle. Bochelle. And one of the uh, Brackley Ware cars. So, clearly, Ashton was going to make it to the line first. Um, the 25 tried several times to get by him, was overdriving. Yes. Laid into him a couple times. And just it just couldn't didn't get work. by him. Yeah. It just didn't work. So, coming through three and four, Michelle sends it down in there. And, I'll, it, and by send it, it wasn't uh, obvious, you know, overdriving of the entry. Because where he got him was right as you're coming off the corner. So, early exit. And instead of keeping the car turned, he just let you know, let takes Will out of it and just drives right up into his left rear. Spins him out. I mean, you, you could tell the kid knew what he was going to do. Gets him right in the left rear, spins that Higgins out. Higgins backs it into the wall. He 1,000% intentionally yeah, ran at into 1, him. Whether he, whether he meant for him to crash, I doubt he no, meant for he him meant to crash. He meant to run into him. But he meant intentionally to yes. drive into him. Drive, yes. He drove into him. Correct. 100%. So, he comes across the line in a race. So, Ashen, who, you know, rightfully is upset, runs across the track as old boy's coming down pit road, hits the windshield, and then all hell breaks, breaks loose on in pit road. Um, that's where all these fines and penalties come right. from that we heard from about today. Bunch of fighting, bunch of, uh, somebody jumped up on top of the 25 mm -hmm. car, just chaos. I mean, chaos, yes. And then the Caden ended up getting the win, which most of you that uh, kept up with it, they probably already seen everything that mm -hmm. happened. But what's your issue, RJ? My issue was the, the <laughs> now well, that you gave a whole synopsis. Well, of the race. I also feel like RJ gets tardy from his breaks during the day because this has been the longest damn smoke break I've I know, ever seen. I know. RJ well, just he broke down the entire race. You're supposed to smoke one cigarette, well, maybe two on a smoke break, not a whole damn pack. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't get paid for breaks around here, so y'all just gonna have to deal with it. Okay. So my issue, the problem line? My <laughs> issue was the wreck, the intentional wreck. <laughs> the kid knew what he was doing, first of all. But his interview oh, yeah. just ran all over me the wrong way. Okay, so this this little brat gets out of the damn car, walks, goes up to that microphone. This Bochelle? Yes. Okay. okay. I haven't seen this. Goes up to the microphone, and he's like, you know, the 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 normal. Oh well, I'm sorry for his team. It wasn't intentional. I don't mean to win that way. And then he goes on a rant, talking about how they're acting like a bunch of damn monkeys, just just spoiled rotten brat kind of stuff. Like get. Real kid, you you were an idiot on the damn racetrack, and then you want to sit here and say the things you say in your damn interview. Get real, get real. That's my issue right there. Damn sport rotten brat right there. Well, this kid big enough to whoop RJ's ass. Oh, no, they're about the same size. Yeah, so I can take him. Come on. Yeah, but I think he's like fifteen. No, oh, well then, come come to me in three more years. <laughs> but you know who who tells him that that's okay. The issue, here's the issue, and we've had the problem in late mile stocks a little bit. He's a rental kid. Um, but now it's pretty bad in the pro late model side of things because you can drive them at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason, there has been an influx of money driving the really good cars in the pro late model series and i would say that in the pro late models it's a lot easier to rent a car that is very very good and run up front in a car that's very good because the disparity in competition is much larger mm -hmm. from the good equipment to the mid-tier right. equipment where in a late model stock car or the cars late model stock division you can rent a car, but the top 25 have all equal equipment. So if you rent a nice car, that doesn't mean you're going to run up front. You just That just means you get to race. A nice but, car. Yeah, yeah, a nice right. car. But if you rent a Donnie Wilson Pro Late model or a Rackley War Pro Late model or an Anthony Campy Pro Late model... You're going to be within the top five. You're going to run in the top right. five, and if not, you just totally suck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, really bad. I'm also and, noticing a pattern here. What's that? RJ's last smoke break was about a pro late model division. Yeah, he what? just has a strong hate for He's pro got a late vendetta. Models. Yeah, I do. I mean, this is not the first time that a Cars Tour pro late model race has ended this way. Um, actually, Tri County last year, with the Setzer's car got dumped by another kid with money. Um, and 
There's okay. nothing wrong with these kids coming in and developing in a series, but the problem is... Are they actually developing? There's no consequences for what's happening. I mean, th- this is the shit that needs to be learned at a go-kart level Correct. or a freaking mini-stock level, Correct. like we talked about. Correct. Not at the car store level. And, uh, well, here, this is a good example of how m- much different the offset or pro late model scene is versus the car store late model stock scene. Your 2023 Winchester 400 winner finished two laps down in the late mile stock race with no damage. So, in a Lee Falk car. Oh, mm. yes. That is that is correct, D. So, that should tell you how difficult the late mile <coughs> stock series is. Or the, how stiff the competition right, is. Right, Compared to what they're out racing. Correct. Typically. I'm not saying that the people that drive pro late models, super late models aren't good. Because no. they are good. And they run their own, you know, they, they're good at driving those cars. How'd the other one do? Nassie? Yeah. He did good. Finished he ran 5th or 6th. 6th, 7th, somewhere around mm-hmm. there. He ran good all night. He was in a brand new Reynolds car. Um, ran Hammer New. That was her first race. So, it was cool to race with him. He, he actually was pretty easy to race with. Gave me a lot of room and very respectful. So, I'm to sure... Everybody, it looked like. I'm sure he's going to race people like he wants to be raced until you cross him. I just wouldn't cross him. I mean, well, ain't that ain't that the ain't yeah, that how it's supposed I to be? Probably wouldn't cross. Yeah, I mean that's just how that's how it needs to be though. There's there is mutual respect. Maybe he listens to the podcast and he's just a big Landon Huffman fan and didn't want to piss you off. I doubt that. Doubt, highly doubt I that. Highly doubt that. <laughs> that's another uh, RJ smoke break. Um, Kids, get your shit together. One topic I wanted to discuss on this episode, just because it's relevant right now, and I've started an uproar on Twitter. It seems or X, sorry. <laughs> The Lucas Oil Dirt Late Model Series, for the first time this year, had a playoff format, which was like a sudden death final race, uh, similar to like the championship race for the Cup Series or the Truck Series or the Xfinity Series. So how many cars got to run for the championship? I believe it was three, maybe four. Okay. I'm not positive on that. Either way, the guy who dominated the series... He had like a 600-point lead going into the final race. Uh, Gets wiped away. Reset. Gets wiped away. Had an issue because of track preparation. It broke suspension because the track was rough, and like it caught a rut or something. I don't exactly know 100% what happened. I wonder if that's a common issue for that track. I don't think so. Hmm. He had a malfunction, a okay. mechanical malfunction. That took him out of the race mm-hmm. when he was the rightful champion by a long shot. Um, and it just left a bad taste in my mouth because it just makes me feel like, well, it doesn't make me feel like I thought this before, but it reiterates the fact in my mind that the playoffs are gimmicky and don't belong in motorsports. They are stupid. It's nothing but fabricated drama. And realistically, we don't need that in order for the series to any series to function and do well. Now, does it create, excitement yeah Yeah. i mean i agree that it does do that and i'm sure there's people out there that enjoy it and maybe as a racing um traditionalist i'm never going to enjoy that but it just doesn't seem right for me to me that a guy can win every single race up until the last race and finish second and still lose the championship well yeah because like okay you win the damn points by 500 who cares you kicked their ass all year you deserve to win the points you had your stuff what, what did you just go kick their ass all year for what nothing. reason? Nothing. Absolutely damn nothing. Yeah, it was a waste of a year, basically. So, congrats on being a badass. Thanks for coming, but you're going to get shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, it reminded me of when Kyle Busch won the championship and missed, like, 10 races yeah. Yeah. in the Cup That's, Series. Yeah. I mean, I think Kyle Busch is a rightful champion. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Dude deserves a NASCAR championship. Did he deserve it that year? Absolutely no. not. So, without the, the chase, would Jimmy Johnson have seven championships? I'm sure I don't I'm, think so. I'm sure the numbers are out there to confirm that, but I do know that Jeff Gordon would probably be a seven-time champion. Yes. and maybe Jimmy Johnson would have won. I I think that he would still would have won a number about, of them. I think he'd probably hover about five I'm or not six. saying he wouldn't have won some championships. <laughs> I just don't know that he would have won. I mean, we've had a playoff format of some kind since 2004 in the Cup Series. I mean, the chase for the Cup has been there, but it yeah. used to be a well, reset. I've hated it from day one. Yeah, I mean... That's a great thing about the car store, and that's what I put out in a tweet. I said, if you're tired of fabricated drama and playoffs in motorsports, follow the car store because it's a traditional, old-school style point system, and it's got great personalities. It's rising in popularity. It best stay that way. Um, and 
it's so competitive too that nobody's going to run away with the points. Right. Yeah. I mean, if if you do, then you deserve it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but I just think that pe- those people that claim how racing should be more like stick and ball sports, or they want a game seven um, moment, it's not things like that. You look at sports. stick and ball, though. I mean, I guess you could have the argument that well, I could go kick their ass all year long in baseball, but step on my dick in the playoffs and lose. Yes, but that's I mean, not necessarily the same thing because <clears throat> you're still playing the same game on a, on a the same field. Yeah, and you're not always playing the other teams at the same time either. Right, like that. That's what makes us. It's different. team versus team, one right. on I mean, one, not yeah. not. I know what you're saying. One v I mean, thirty. The concept's kind of the same. You could be badass all year, mm-hmm. and then you just do something dumb and beat yourself in the playoffs, and you lose. I mean, but with racing, there's just more variables. Like, well, there's way more, more variables. variables. You can't compare it. I mean, that's not one saying. racetrack. That's why we don't is need the playoffs. Yeah. We just need to go. Hey, you kicked ass all year. Here's your trophy, homie. Yeah, because it it plays into the same general idea that if that person is just really good at whatever track is the cutoff track, then that's such right, an yeah. advantage. I mean... Like Harvick was so good at Atlanta yeah, before or, they changed it. You know, Reddick was, like, terrible in JRM stuff for a little while when he back when he won the Xfinity Championship yeah. and just because he the rips the lip yep. at yeah. Homestead, he won the championship. Now, Correct. am Same I with happy Larson. for Tyler? Is he my friend? Absolutely. But did he was he the deserving champion that year? No. <laughs> So it's just uh was Landon Huffman the deserving champion of Hickory Motor Speedway twenty twenty two? Yes. Yes. We I had a three hundred so. point lead. Yep. Yes. Going I, in I, going I, into I, our playoffs. I wasn't saying that to be a smart ass. I just it looked like a good if opportunity Brown to throw a have, things. If Cade Brown would have lost the championship this year, it would have been Yeah. Bullshit. A fluke. Yeah. Because he won eleven races. Right. 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 Whether whether you agree with the situation right. at Hickory or not, like that's he, just he, not a. Yeah. He still had the wins. He still earned the points that you're supposed to earn for a championship. Now I will say that a format like Hickory uses it still rewards the car that is the right. best car because you get because seated. of the tiered playoff deal. Plus mm-hmm. you have four weeks in a row. You're racing at the same track. Like that's a little different. However, I still don't think it's needed, but. I understand more of why it would be used at a short track level because it keeps the fans involved. It also gives the competitors a reason to, to show go up race way. because yeah. you might not typically until all your other decisions you make all your runs the fans off. Yeah, and the drivers <laughs> and the drivers. Yeah. That's that's beside the point. So I don't know. I just don't like the idea of the playoffs. I never have. I understand why they're there. Um, I'm curious to know how many of you out there agree or disagree. If you disagree, that's perfectly okay. Uh, because there, I know there is some people out there that enjoy it, but in my opinion, it's just very hard to... And they're more of the new fans. Yeah. I just think it's very hard for me to sit there and say that, There's you know, if you miss 10 races in the Cup Series and qualify for the playoffs, win the championship, that you're a deserving champion. Or if, you know, somebody... I remember William Byron in the truck series when he was at KBM. He won nine races that year. And blew up at Phoenix. And won like three of the playoff races and then went to Phoenix. And blew up. Blew up and then didn't get a chance to run Homestead for the final four. Well, think about it. Every year you have these fluke-ass winners that win a race and then they're in the playoffs and have a playoff spot and go out in the first round because they suck ass. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean. What's the point? Yeah. I agree on that too. You won Daytona. Congratulations. You didn't crash. Yeah, yeah. They basically, you, you stayed in front of the Rex. Yeah, and then they're never realistically going to have a chance at the championship, so what's the point in even having that situation? Right, yeah. People can argue that it's better for the sponsors and, and yeah, all that, I mean, but... That's, that's the point I was just about to make. It's, it, you know, it, it probably helps the team financially, you know, say, hey, look, you know, we made the playoffs last year. We're, we're oh. decent enough to get, you know, $4 million for a sponsor. Moving the numbers forward was supposed to help sponsors, too. <laughs> Half the team still use the same size quarter panel logo, and their car just looks like shit because the numbers gap. slip forward. And so. I don't think that there's any more sponsors now than there was no, before because the numbers switch. Right. Ain't none sponsor out there that said, oh, hell yeah, we they moved that number forward. Now. By God, I'm going to spend $5 million this year that I didn't <laughs> spend last year because look at that freaking number. It slid forward, by God. I got all this space. I got now. all a, that space. Yeah, I'm a firm believer. That's why M&M's got out. Because their shit looked like crap? Yeah, it looked like hell. So they're like, you know what? We're done. <laughs> it's just, our, we look terrible. We're done. And if you're a late model stock driver, please don't move your number forward. You I've seen people back. do it. You can move it if back. If you move it back, that is 
more acceptable. It's a little more retro. A little, yeah, more, a little more retro, cooler. but please, for the Just love of God. Just keep your damn numbers in the doors yes. and the appropriate size. Numbers sized. are designed for the door of the car. Because mm-hmm. that is your identity. It's in the Bible. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we'll have to fact check that. It's in the Huffman Racing Radio Bible of how you should decal your car. That's that right. is very true. And quarter numbers suck, too. If you yeah. put your yeah, number on the right. quarter... have always sucked. If you slide them forward, that's one thing. That if was you, the demise of the ASA the first time. If you put quarter numbers on your race car, you're you're basically the devil. Hang her up. Yeah. That's it. Me and a race car driver. That also could be an argument. Yeah. How many people put quarter numbers on their car that are actually... I know that... Uh, upfront runners. None that what? I know of. Who? At the stadium. Can't be modified. Oh, well, can't be, I mean, oh. <laughs> typically races without a hood and a whole damn front yeah. end tore off. But <laughs> yeah. you can't deny that it's always up front. That is that is arguably true. I mean, we can't include anybody from Bowman Gray because that ain't real racing. You're right. I'm sorry. My <laughs> apologies. You are oh, right. Oh, God. They ain't a racetrack. Our weekend plans. Well. Take a guess. Seth's can anybody guess what I'm going to he's do? He's going racing. Bullshit. Seth, you're coming racing, dude. Uh, well, that you just confirmed just sh- what we were talking about earlier. You shot your deer already. Yeah, you, you got, got your fishing hey, hey, Look, I have another tag for a buck, and I still got four doe tags. So. Okay, well, why don't you shoot it after this weekend? You can take this weekend off. What? Because it's Halloween weekend. Magic happens on Halloween weekend. Well, go Sunday, then. Oh, I have to go to work Monday. Uh, so? So? Okay. What are tags? Come come racing. It's the last time we're taking cars. Uh, you wouldn't know anything about it because they deal with like the legal system and following laws. Oh, Yeah, you don't follow laws, remember? None. <laughs> You're a lawbreaker. He is an outlaw and <laughs> yes. probably the biggest... Never mind. Wow! Wow! Say it, Seth. See, I told you he'd be in the mood. Say it. I'm not, I ain't in a mood. <laughs> I was going to say he's like the most pussiest outlaw I've ever met. That's fair assessment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this weekend... He's going to be a be- badass to break laws. <laughs> we will be at Tri County Speedway again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are racing two race cars. We've got uh, Jaden Kratashi, I think is how you say his name. If I just butchered it, I'm sorry, Jaden. Should have brought him in here. And <laughs> we should shows. have. He was just here. <laughs> uh, we just got his car wrapped. He is going to be driving our number 75 late model stock car this weekend. And I will be racing the limited late model race in Gilbert. And uh, we've got Carolina Central Carolina Scale on the car again uh, this weekend. So thank you to those guys. But looking forward to it. Double duty uh, for Huffman Racing. Two shots at a trophy. So it's going to be a lot of fun if you're in the Hudson, North Carolina, or Hickory, North Carolina area. Come on out. show up in two nice rigs, too. Yeah, we've got uh, two nice trailers this weekend. Money Man Holler is going to bring us to the track. Yep. And uh, Rich is racing. So we've actually... How much Money Man charge you for that? Zero doll hairs. Oh, there's a catch somewhere. Somewhere there's a catch. We have three bullets in the chamber this weekend, boys. One's definitely a bullet. One is a, one is a bullet. One's a rubber bullet, <laughs> um, or, or airsoft, whatever you prefer. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited. Come on out if you're in the area. If you're not in the area and you still want to come on out, then make the drive. It'll be a lot of fun. Can we go ahead and announce that uh, Track Kelly is our new home track? We have no home track. We're running the yeah. Court. yeah I mean, but still, a, we still have a home track. Well, not really. I don't live there. Well, do you live at Hickory? Yeah. No, but we've really? raced there for the last how many years? Well, it's a new age. It's new dawn. We are going to go to Tri County and run. Yes. yes. See, but we don't know how much. Well, yet not a lot. A whole lot, ladies and gentlemen. It just turned to twenty weeks. Seth's going to yeah. Just congratulations, just, Seth. Just off that comment. Your seventeen weeks. week commitment <laughs> just turned into twenty three. Would you like to go for twenty six? Uh. <laughs> One more word, and we'll go for thirty. All right. I can't can't say anything else. (laughs) We'll discuss this at a future day. We are at that point in the show where we like to review reviews. My favorite part. Yep, RJ's favorite part. I believe we have a few new ones on Apple Podcasts, and we had a few comments on YouTube as well. So we'll go ahead and go go, uh, look those up. This one says five-star review for now. Uh, For now? Okay, well, that's a four. (laughs) Well, listen, uh, this is why. Okay. It says, uh, it's from LX Dickens, and it says, Fantastic show with a great peek behind the curtain of short track racing with antics among good friends. Five stars. But if you don't put RJ in a mini cup car, I'm not listening anymore. Okay, well, there you go. You got the gun put to your head now. 
We might be have something in the works a for a little bit RJ. better than a mini cup. Yeah, it's going to be my, better. Well, than I can a mini use cup. both my feet. Could possibly look like a mini cup after. Yeah, well, we hope not. <clears throat> he, he might he might be setting himself up hey, for future uh, races too. RJ, I'm right. just going to tell you my expectations are extremely low. That's okay. Call okay, me. well, I guess it's breaking news. <laughs> RJ's going to race for Huffman Racing in 2024. <laughs> tentatively, and tentatively, yeah, tentatively, unless something changes. But as of now, RJ his attitude Williams, doesn't change. Yeah, <laughs> oh, geez. it's his all racing based status off, is going to very good. Very good point, Seth. <laughs> it's all based off attitude, commitment, and the willingness to show up and work. <laughs> but RJ will make a. Tentatively, will make a limited. If RJ late makes model. it through testing, he could possibly start a race. Yeah, a limited late model race. Yes, well, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to press the gas as hard as it needs to be pressed. We're still looking for some funding for RJ to run his limited late model race. So if you're interested in funding Holla. RJ, Holla. give us a shout. Somebody write the the smokes the store. Yes. Oh, yeah, and, the tobacco store. And That'd I still fitting. need a cigarette sponsor for 2024. Um, <laughs> reach out to Landon Huffman <laughs> at Landon Huffman Racing. All right, we got another five star review, RJ. Five stars. This one's coming from uh, just says doesn't have a name. It says keep up the good work. Um, it's kind of long. I'm gonna read it though. Keep up the good work, fellas. YouTube monthly member. Love the vlogs and podcast. Uh, look forward to them every week. Cool to see how you guys have raced on a way smaller budget at Huffman Racing than most of the people you race against. Can definitely relate. Um, he's doing that most of his career gotten some ideas by watching us to implement in his own race and holy shit oh, that's God look out almighty. look out he said not sure if it's a good thing or not yeah me either yeah, brother find out. <laughs> me either but he does have two questions uh he says how's progress coming on francis since she's left the shop and if she did wind up being fixable well our buddy brian murphy does have francis on the jig yeah, he and made a post uh, the other day he has he? been making some progress i believe um it won't be long, and it'll be ready for a front clip, so Francis could be returning to the Huff and Racing uh, shop, which we're going to have to clear some space out, because we, mm. we have a few more announcements coming, too. We haven't been able to tell you guys yet. Only well, on the podcast. But, yeah. yeah, the next announcement... Yeah. Uh, we you have, have to listen to the podcast yeah. to know the announcement. Yeah. yeah, we have two announcements coming, uh, but Seth did have a good idea. We're only we're going to lo- release it exclusively on the podcast, okay. for those of you listening, and if you go post it, on other social media, we're blocking you from you, the podcast. Yes, you are blocked from all Huffman Racing social media for the rest of your life. Rest you of your leak life. our news. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> and it will be monitored. No ifs, ands, or buts. Not, rela- not taking that block off, nothing. The last question is, uh, wondering if JSR ran Frankie any this year with another driver or did another team wind up with that car? So they did race Frankie. Uh, twice? Twice. Did we get five stars or four stars on this one? We got five stars. Okay. Yeah. Five stars. <laughs> uh, they ran Casey Pierce, and he won the limited late model mm-hmm. race that they ran at the very end yeah, of the year, you're right? Yeah. Championship yeah. night, but they ran it in late model, I think, once and finished uh, ninth or tenth or something like that. But uh, they did run it and uh, hung a new body on her and all that good stuff. So Frankie's still out there; she's still alive, still digging, still digging. But uh, that's gonna do it for the reviews. Two five star reviews, RJ. How you feel about that? Yeah, well, those are five star reviews to me. All right, beautiful. Well. Just a reminder for everyone, if uh, you haven't gave us a review, you can do that on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Um, Spotify, you can leave a five-star review with no text, but over on Apple Podcasts, you can drop us a question or let us know what you enjoy about the podcast, and we would greatly appreciate that. Helps us get out to new viewers, new listeners, whatever. <clears throat> One more thing. What's that? I was at work the other day, mm-hmm. and there was a song playing, and it got me thinking. Name one female artist music artist that will turn a grown man into a grown woman instantly as soon as their music starts playing uh mariah carey shania twain i mean yeah what's going that was reba that was playing. shania twain for sure what song was playing? not reba, man no. i feel like uh, a woman well, fancy fancy can do it yeah uh man i feel like a woman's mm-hmm. one whose bed have your boots been oh under? whose bed have your boots been uh another under? one uh <laughs> strawberry wine will do it to me every yes, time yes oh, carter time. Yeah, Deanna Carter. Also, Kid Rock and Cheryl Crow picture. Yes, great song. It, yeah, it's, that is true. That's you're going to sing both parts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's so true. You feel her it, side, it, too. It was just, I was thinking about it. It's crazy how a song like that comes on. And you could totally sing it in a man's voice if you wanted to, but you don't, ever. No. No. Well, and you, and you feel the emotions. Like, it'll have you dancing around. Mm-hmm. Shania Every, Twain, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. God, no that's, doubt if, about you've, that. if you've been drinking beer, oh. That's the great thing about music. I thought you were going to say, uh, what... Women music artists would turn a man into a horny bastard, and I was going to say Carrie Underwood. 
<laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What about you, RJ? Plump? Huh? Ain't she got a little plump in her older years? Nah. No. Nah. Have you not seen Sunday Night Football? Do you think I watch football? Sure. You did the other week. <laughs> Yeah, I was he made for, that up for content no, purposes. I was, he didn't I was, he was Googling, Googling what is a kickoff? <laughs> <laughs> what is a touchdown? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning in Touch to another back. episode of Huff and Racing Radio. It's been fun. We're getting down to the very end of our 2023 season. It's been a great season. We've had a lot of success, had a lot of crazy shit happen to us, and met some cool people along the way. Sure. Yeah, um, got a lot of cool stuff in store for 2024 that we're excited to share and, a lot and get of content. Yeah, get lots rocking and rolling. and lots of content. We'll have some off-season stuff, too, once we get wound down here. But um, as usual, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, we really appreciate it. You guys got anything else to add? Whatever your wife's cooking smells phenomenal. Yes, I can't wait to delicious. eat it. Also, Gutman's in the shop working <laughs> without oh, us. Oh, we got to so. go. See y'all later. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll, we'll talk to you next week.